so far in the study of Hebrews, and this high priest, that the Old Testament system had faults. It didn't work. The priesthood itself was flawed. He says in chapter 7, verse 11, If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Didn't work. Had weaknesses to it. Throughout chapter 7, 8, and 9, he keeps bringing this fact up. The tabernacle itself was flawed. The very tabernacle Chapters the writer uses the term I like better. A worldly tabernacle. Pitched by man. It took time one Wednesday night and read about the tribe of Levi. Twenty-two thousand of them. Multiple of eleven. The very workers that pitched this tabernacle. was a cutoff number. It was called another place. A shadow. I give it a name that you may not care for, but I couldn't think of a better one. The tabernacle pitched in heaven above called the true. We'll get a different name, it's the same thing. How's that? Pseudo. It's another word for false. It's the same thing. It was like Storefront tabernacle. I've seen some elaborate storefronts in Los Angeles. They got the church doors. The, the church looking windows. Some of them go as far as to have stained glass in the front. But they're storefronts. They look like a church building from the outside, but they're not, not really. More of a storage. Another word he uses is called figure. I might have one more. A type. A representation. Mock tabernacle. 
Amado. That is a tabernacle. And all these terms can apply to the priesthood itself beginning with Aaron. The whole thing was established and built upon carnal <coughs> commandments. Which Hebrews says could never make the comers thereunto perfect. Sacrifices themselves that served as the vehicle to mediate between God and man were inferior. sin. They did nothing wrong. They are sheer, pure victims in this case. How many animals lost their lives over a period of 1,500 20 years. I'll tell you, the number's up in the millions. Literal, literally, in the millions. Again, you look at it, 600,000. Came out of Egypt. If one person sin once a year and offer a sacrifice that's 600,000 animals and you know well look at yourself if you're required to bring forth animal sacrifices how many would you bring in a year don't think about that animal and don't because <laughs> enough to get really depressed Because the animals were inferior, their blood was inferior. Something's missing. That's badly needed in this entire equation. Chapter 10. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never underline that. Rodney, go fast. Check in chapter 7, 8, 9, 10. And find the word never. See where it appears. Just in the time here. I'm just kidding. Now, it might be used so often, it might be in the appendix. In this case, I'm not going to show up in the text. In the concordance. Is this Hebrews? Yes. Yeah. Chapter 10, verse 
Hebrews, Hebrews, just in Hebrews chapter 7, 8, 9, and 10. It's just in verse 11 of chapter 10. Chapter 10, verse 11. Let's take a peek at it in verse chapter 10. And every priest stands daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Same thing here. Verse 1. Can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year by year by year continually without missing a year it could never make the comers there into perfect. But they did, he says in verse 2, for then will they not have ceased to be offered. That makes sense. It's just pure logic, right? To took away sin, why quit offering? Right? Because of the worshippers once purged from sin, that is, should have had no more conscience of sin. What happened every year? But in those sacrifices, there's a remembrance again made of sins every year. It is that is a cleansing of sin, a remembrance of sin. God reminded him on the day of atonement when sin was cleansed, he reminded him that you're sinners. That's all it's about. The day of atonement was a reminder day to remind them that in spite of the fact if these animals standing for you, the blood is stood in for you, you're still sinners. The remembrance of sin. Then again, how often? Let's say in verse 3. How often? Every year. Now, a remembrance was made of sin in their conscience. How much more so in God's? For God to do with his people for 1,520 years and to constantly be reminded of their sins. And kept on leading. And for 40 years, kept on giving them manna. And for 40 years, did not let their shoes wear out. For 40 years, gave them water to drink. And the fact, in light of the fact that they're still sinners. It shows the goodness of God. Yes. How good God is. How good God has been to us. Yes. God should have cut us off a long time ago. Yes. He should have ended some of our benefits a while back. And in spite of that, we fall short with God. He continues to come up on his end of the bar. Thank you, Lord. Taking care of us. Year after year after year after year. Sometimes we come in knowing we don't deserve it. We get a blessing from God and wonder why. Right? Get, get, get a check from God and wonder where this comes from. You get a blessing and wonder why, why did God allow this? Because you know the God should be penalizing you. And he keeps on running down his blessing and his righteousness upon you anyhow, in spite of the fact we're sinners. That's a great God. You agree? Yes. How much better will God be if you weren't? Hmm. But that's okay for me. Hmm. How much more goodness would God reign upon us if we deserved it? Hmm. That's the thing about it. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats to take away sin. What's all the whole object lesson in this entire Old Testament affair? Sin was never ever taken away. It was remembered. It was rehearsed again. It was brought back to the conscience again. But never removed. Y'all okay, yeah. yeah. Wherefore? The missing ingredient. When he cometh into the world, 
he says, sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not. Put yourself on God's place now. Do you think God loves his creation? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I never get enough of watching these nature shows and looking at the balance of nature and things called the food chain, so and so forth, how God runs a herd of wildebeest measuring close to a billion strong and instead of course for them that they roam the plains of Africa and arrive when the grass grows. And feeds all of them. And brings them to certain places on the earth in time to deliver their babies. It's incredible. Watching according to the other day about the uh, about The Red Birth of Long Bays. Vegas Hotel. There you go. <laughs> That's what I think of. The Pink Flamingo. Flamingo. The Flamingo nests in a place where no other animal or bird can even live. And that's where they build a nest and hatch their young. And they number in the hundreds of thousands. It's just incredible how that things like sardines. Anybody like sardines? Love them. I, I can't get this over. <laughs> Kippers are okay, the other thing, but the sardines, they have work for me. Right? But they have school of sardines, schools that are 50 miles wide and a couple hundred miles long, dense. And they begin to run at a certain time. And when these sardines begin to run up the coast of Africa, they feed everything in the ocean. And their run is time when everything in the ocean is giving birth. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. This is a guy who cares about creation. Another, I was going to have Tiana sing a song this morning from the message. His eyes on the sparrow. Where's the Lord's spirit? Supposed to be up here. Come up here in the front seat. You. <laughs> she knows better. <laughs> We've done that there. What's wrong with you? I know you're a layout, so they cut me late. Sorry. Shouldn't have got in. <laughs> His eyes on the sparrows. The sparrow is the most common bird on the earth. I uh, I feed birds in my backyard just to watch, just to watch them. About a twenty-pound bag of bird feed, and I throw it out there. And it's funny, first the birds wouldn't come when I sit in the back step, but the sparrows. They get nervous. That's why you see them at the top of the street and they come down a couple of branches, look around, they're real skittish. Look around, they come out some more, they get in the fence. They finally jump on the ground, start picking the seed and still looking. Okay? I found that the female cardinals, they're more aggressive. They'll come down while I'm in the back step and they just, they just eat. The doves, Seem to be more less afraid of people than any bird. They'll come up in the front row. Right. There's a pair of doves that I guess doves meant for life. There's a pair that just have a, a nest on our back porch before we add it on. That same pair is still together. They always come down the pair. They'll come real close. We need to see. Then I realized recently that the cats. Or watching the bird. <laughs> well, sometimes the bird.
birds wouldn't come down. I couldn't figure out why. But I noticed now, this has been gone for a couple of months. I noticed now, when I come out and sit in the back step, I hear the birds chirping real loud. They start gathering. And this, this is the guy that, that gets his food. <laughs> With the cat that cuts across the yard, I've been shooting away. That little baby gun. <laughs> I haven't hit the cat. I just shoot something close that will make a lot of noise if the cat will run. Okay? Well, the cat always ran kind of slow, couldn't figure out why. Cat has kittens. I saw her kittens up the back. Kid as they can be. It's not like a dilemma. Don't just turn about a cat, some cat food. So I can feed the cats, and then I'll put the birds in on top of the garage. But then I can't watch the bird. So I notice when I feed the cat, I love the cat, she disappears to her three or four kittens, then the birds come. So they eat in shifts now. <laughs> feed the cat first, then feed the birds. The point is, though, is that it says now one sparrow falls to the ground that God doesn't know about. You have to think about it. How does the heart of God feel when a sparrow falls? It's kind of bothering him. How do you think God has felt? over 1,500 years watching his sacrifices, these animals being slaughtered for the sins of something they didn't do. It's got to break his heart. Do you think so? Yes. In the hundreds of millions, animals being killed. Every time a lamb comes in, they take that knife and cut that lamb's throat and drain the blood out. That lamb is kicking everything and as his life runs out of it. Over and over and over and over again. Wherefore, when he come into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering he didn't want. God didn't want that from the days of Adam and Eve back in the garden. When the first sacrifice was made by God himself, when they had to take an animal, God had to literally catch an animal and kill this animal and drain his blood and make coats of skins for Adam and Eve. How did God feel doing that? Broke his heart. But it shows how much more valuable man is than animals. He just broke his heart because he loved one more than the other. And he loved them both. So, he didn't want that anymore. He said, but a body has to prepare me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure since day one. Didn't it please him? He inaugurated a system that he didn't like to save man. But he was never ever pleased when somebody came as a, with a sin offering, although God accepts the sin offering and it's a necessity in the life of the sinner. God took the sin offering but wasn't pleased with the offering. How do you justify that? You know? It's like, to be like, It'd be like in the Mother's Day gift. You'd find your child robbed another mother to get her. Okay? I mean, you're thinking for your child for thinking about you. What about the poor mother that got robbed so I can have these flowers? Yes, so I would get the flowers from her. I broke in the, I broke in the house on the street. <laughs> they got a they got a floors delivery with a truck put the bars in the front porch. I went and stole them. Here, mom. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> but you're torn. Got these beautiful flowers, but some mother has none. That's where God it was for 1,520 years, torn over a gift that's brought, but at the expense of His creation. Mm -hmm. All that time. So it says what? In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then, and and, and y'all been cheating again today. Bring the head. Bring the head. 
How many have been cheating? Don't I raise a hand? You guys are going to get it. <laughs> Can I tell you the truth in church? <laughs> this is I. Lo, I come. In the Bible of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. What is he saying? You don't see Christ's name in the Old Testament. But he's saying, I come to buy the book, do your word, your will. Every sacrifice was me. Every lamb was me being killed. Every turtle dove was me. Every red heifer was me. Every bull being slaughtered was me. It's me being represented in the shadow and the type and the figure to do your will. Above what he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, meaning he didn't want those, neither had pleasure in, twofold. You didn't want them, and it didn't please you. Try to put yourself in the heart of God, in the mind of God. I don't want these. They don't please me, but they're necessary for them. So I'm going to go through all kinds of internal changes for them. If that doesn't show the love of God to us, what does? Amen. To make a system that he didn't like, a system he didn't want, a system that didn't please him, to save man. His heart is broken to save us. His creation is Slaughter to save us. For, well, since the beginning of time. Wow. Since Adam and Eve. Hope it has an impact on you. Above what he says, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings. And offering for sin thou wouldest not. Neither hadst pleasure in which are offered by the law. What law? His law. He passed a law he didn't like. He passed the law that he hated. He passed the law that he had no pleasure in just for man. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Who's, who's speaking now? Jesus. He taken away the first that he might establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified to the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. That's still too much for me to digest. One of my Jesus paid for, like I said, I can buy the book. Those animal blood, the animal blood was my blood in fear, my blood in type, my blood in shadow. So when he died, his blood, being without spot, bought those sacrifices and paid for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then paid for the sins of people who weren't born yet. You and me. We weren't around in 31 AD. He knew you were going to be born in the 50s or the 60s or the 70s or the 80s. And God paid for your sins back then. And then called you to cash in on He put a bank account in heaven for you and said, it's all paid. All you got to do is come in and sign up. And your sins are gone. Been gone. Is that great? Yeah. Well, Lord, you don't know what I've done. It don't matter. He doesn't classify sin. He didn't qualify the sin. Whatever sin you did, from murder to whatever, he said, it's paid. Is for I went to cross and died for. Oh. Case closed. And every priest standeth daily, I'm talking about in the old system now, standeth daily ministering and offering, oftentimes, put stuff in the road of the Levite right now. How many lambs did the Levites slay in his lifetime as a priest? Like I said, if everybody brought one lamb a year, that's 600,000 lambs you killed. That don't count the daily sacrifice, the morning sacrifice, 
the one between the two evenings, it don't count them. That's just the individual sacrifices. You spend twice a year and brought a lamb, that's 1,200,000 lambs. That's the only thing two times. What's your average rate? Think about it. Once a week, to take there and make the same thing and make take 600,000 and multiply it times 52. That's what it means, it says, offering oftentimes the same sacrifice which can never take away the sin. What a job! How can you possibly look forward to going to work and coming to lamb every day, realizing this lamb is not take away sin? Just temporary cover. But this man, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever. I still get rocked, I'm still rocked by that. This man, one sacrifice, it shows how powerful this man was and how powerful his blood was, offered one sacrifice for sins forever. Covered forever. All your sins are done away with forever. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because he put away sin. Mm. Not acts. Sin itself. The acts come from sin. There's no sin. There's no acts of sin. So what did he do? He put away sin. He didn't put away lying or murdering or cheating or things like that. He put sin away from which all those things spring from. He went to the very root and the cause of our behavior problems and put that away. So I'm going to change it because he ain't got that far with you yet. He hasn't glorified you yet. But on the real side, on his calendar and his agenda and his program, it's all done. He's just buying time. Is that good? Yes. It's time to lift up your head. I realized, like Justin Jackson saying a long time ago, I am somebody. <laughs> I'm sin free. Yeah. And nothing to do with me. Amen. Absolutely nothing. That's why you can't work your way in. You can't do enough do's and not do enough don'ts to get to heaven. He's already paid the price and you can't add one penny to it. It's done. Getting that? Yeah. That's why I understand uh, the idea of a good deed is a joke to God. Wow. I mean good deed. For what? How can a sinner do a good deed? How can sweet water come out of a bitter fountain? Can't happen. So good deeds are out the window. Doing good works out the window. You know, being nice to somebody as a way to go to heaven out the window. It's all gone. Why? Because the problem was sin and God got rid of the problem. Thank you, Lord. And the rest is just I want to say bull. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the word. <laughs>